Hi, I'm Steve Good, and welcome to the Scroll Saw Workshop. I uh, wanted to get back into the workshop tonight and build another project for you guys and uh, do some videos. And uh, what I've come up with tonight to uh, put a pattern up on the website is called a collapsible basket. Now these uh, are pretty easy to make. A couple little techniques you need to learn to uh, uh, get the bowl to collapse the way you want it to. But uh, you'll be able to find this pattern on my website. It's www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com. Now I'm going to zoom in on this just a little bit and show you a couple of the features of it. Here's what we're going to build today. It's a hummingbird collapsible basket. And if you can see, the basket is actually a spiral that's cut into the pattern and it allows the uh, wood to open up uh, once it's finished. Now, um, what you'll do to make this happen is when you cut this pattern, you'll set, when you get ready to cut the spiral, you will set the table on your scroll saw to an angle of somewhere between four and a half and uh, six degrees on this three quarter inch material using a number seven blade. Now, if you change the width of the material or you change the size of the blade, um, the amount that this bowl is going to open up is going to change. So I'll show you here in just a minute that you want to do a test cut to make sure you've got the depth like you want it to be. Okay, uh, with that, let's get started on this pack. Oh, one more thing. The foot of the bowl is just simply a cutout at the bottom, and you pivot it 190 degrees and uh, countersink a screw into there. And the same thing on the sides to get the bowl to stay in here. You just countersink some screws onto each side. Okay, let's get started. Before we uh, get into the supplies that we need for this project tonight, I want to take you over to the table saw and uh, show you a very silly and very serious mistake I made tonight and uh, really was lucky to come away with uh, not much of an injury. So just for a second here, I'm going to take you over to the table saw and show you what I did. Okay, I'm going to admit right here on film to one of the dumber things I've ever done in the workshop and I just want to show you um, how just uh, getting in a little bit of a hurry can really cause you a lot of problems. This is the board that I was going to cut our pattern out of today, and I had already cut it to length. And the next thing I wanted to do is I didn't need the full width of this board to cut this pattern, so I was going to rip it down. And rather than bring up my rip fence and make this cut in a sensible way, I got in a hurry and decided to use my uh, uh, sled here to go ahead and make a rip cut. And what happened to me is I pushed this piece through, I had completely finished the cut, okay, and I'm going to turn this camera just a little bit so you can get a better view. I had pulled this piece away, pulled this piece away, and for some unexplained reason, uh, just pretty much stupidity, I took my thumb and I pushed this away with the blade still moving. So I've already committed about 12 cardinal sins here of woodworking. And what happened was the blade caught the corner of this wood, picked it up, twirled it around, and I'm going to zoom in here real close just to show you the uh, amount of damage it did to this wood to give you an idea of how serious a situation this could have been. And if you see that gouge right there in the wood, that's where the blade picked the wood up and threw it back at my stomach. Uh, at a speed faster than uh, you want something thrown at you. And I was just very, very lucky that this blade didn't go a little higher and hit me in the head or we wouldn't be making this video tonight. So, everybody be careful in the workshop. I've been doing this for a lot of years. I know better than to make these stupid mistakes, but I still did it. So, something to watch for. You know, watch for being careless and uh, try to do the right thing with your tools. Here's the supplies we're going to need for this project tonight. Of course, you're going to need the uh, pattern off of the website, and you can get that at www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com. Uh, we're going to need uh, a three-quarter inch piece of wood of your choice, cut to size for the pattern. And you're also going to need some scrap wood, cut to the same dimension as the wood you're going to use in the project. And what we're going to do with this scrap wood is we're going to practice cut the uh, pattern of the bowl and we're going to test the uh, depth that this bowl is going to push out because what we're going to do is we're going to tilt our table on our scroll saw and in this case I tilted it to six degrees and this was using a number seven blade and I made this spiral cut and when I finished I wanted to test how deep the bowl would push out 
And as you can see in this case, with a number seven blade and a six degree bevel, I didn't get a very deep bolt. So this is not what I was looking for and that's why I made this test cut just to make sure I could get the depth I needed. So when we actually begin to create the pattern, I'm going to move the angle of the table back to five degrees and we'll get a little deeper bowl and should be closer to what we're looking for. So the shallower the angle of the cut, the shallower that you set the angle of your table, the deeper the bowl will fall out. Now if you get it too shallow, it'll do like this backwards, it'll just be springy and obviously we don't need that either. So we want something that when we push it open, it'll stay stuck open and we want it to, to come out to make a full size bowl for our pattern. So go ahead and make this test cut until you're comfortable you know, with the, the depth you get. And also keep in mind that if you change the, the thickness of the board that you're going to use, or if you change to a different size blade, for instance, a number nine, you're going to remove more wood and the depth of this bowl is going to change also. So get you some scrap wood and test this cut before you actually begin on your project. And of course, other than that, we're going to need our clear box tape because we're going to be cutting some pretty thick material here and we want to make sure we keep the blade good and lubricated as we cut. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and apply the pattern, uh, take it over to the drill press, make our interior uh, in, uh, holes, and then we'll meet you over at the uh, scroll saw and we'll begin to cut this pattern. I've coated the back side of the pattern uh, with our all-purpose uh, spray adhesive and uh, applied it to our blank of wood. And now what I'm going to do, because this wood is so thick, um, I'm going to go ahead and completely cover this pattern with our clear masking tape and that will help lubricate the blade. So I'm not only going to cover the top, I'm going to cover the back too just to give these blades as much life as possible. You'll find when you're cutting this uh, spiral pattern here, your blades will start to dull usually before you get to the center. So you want to give yourself as much, uh, as much blade life as you can and this tape will help that quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover the front, wrap it all the way around to the back. Completely covered the pattern in a clear box tape. Now I'm going to take it to the drill press. I've got the blank over here at the drill press. I'm going to go ahead and drill all my interior holes and the starter hole for the spiral and the starter hole for the outside of the bowl. And uh, then we'll take it over to the uh, scroll saw. Over here at the scroll saw, and uh, I want to talk just a second here about the uh, sequence that we'll cut this pattern in. Uh, I've already got the table tilted to the right um, five degrees is where I ended up setting it. And because of that, since I've got it tilted and the only cut in this pattern that we need to cut uh, with the table tilted is a spiral, I'm going to start out by cutting the spiral. Then after I get it completely cut out, I'll go ahead and put the table back to 90 degrees and then we can cut the rest of the pattern. Now I'm going to use a couple of blades on this project. I'm going to use a number 7, and I'm going to use the number 7 to cut the spiral, and I'll probably use the number 7 to cut most of the rest of the pattern until I get to some of these interior lines that are fairly fine lines on the, uh, on the hummingbirds, and then I'll probably move down to either a number 5 or maybe a number 2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, insert this blade and we'll get started. I'm going to zoom in here now and begin to cut on this pattern uh, so you can get a close look at it. And again, like I said, I'm going to start out with the uh, spiral here. I'm probably going to go through at least two, if not three, blades on this particular project. I'm going to use, start with a brand new number seven blade. I'm going to cut the spiral with that blade. And then uh, after I get the spiral cut, I'll probably insert a new number seven just to get, make sure I've got uh, you know, a good blade to cut the rest of the pattern. So with that, let's get started making this cut. I've also got the uh, scroll saw speed turned down quite a bit. Um, just to give the blade a chance to expel the wood out of the cut as we go to keep the blade from getting so hot. 